All right, you guys, welcome back to another project by Jay. And for today's project, we are removing this CRV B20. So we are suspecting a head gasket, back head gasket. The car is overheating, um, which is weird because once you start driving, the temperature goes back down. We thought it was the radiator fan, but it's not. But we did check the uh, oil and it does look a little watery in there. So we're suspecting a uh, bad hit gasket. So we're about to drain it right now, Sam. We'll check it out. Oh, chocolate milk. It is chocolate milk. Oh, dang. So it does have that watery, um, vibe to it so there is some water in there let that finish draining out as you guys can see oh here and so we're also doing a retrofit conversion with the headlights too that's why we also have it off um and plus this is allows us more room to access the b20 so um, it's nighttime as you guys can see. Just so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna let the right oil down. drain for overnight and then we'll continue the project in the morning where we can see more stuff. But as you guys can see, the engine is leaking oil everywhere too. So we're ass. gonna have to replace all the gasket which previous like over a year and a half ago we did redo this motor too so uh it is weird that all of this gasket and stuff is starting to fell on us plus the overheating problem but it's also because we bought a used engine and just threw it in without checking it or anything so that's probably why too so this time we're going to take the engine apart and inspect it but yep so what is this an old one crv 99. Oh, it's a 99 CRV automatic, and this is the um, the real time all wheel drive uh, version. So, yeah, we are going to have to disconnect the shaft and stuff from underneath the transmission before we pull this engine out. So, hopefully, it's an easy job. Uh, so far, we got the axles out. Uh, went ahead and took out the lower bond joints and then the tie rods so that way we have access. Uh, um, also went ahead and took off the headers and the radiator. That's the um, that's the condenser radiator for the AC. Um, but yep, got those apart, pulled out the front end with the headlights. And then last night where we left you was um, started draining the oil. So this does not have the all, the all wheel drive um, shaft. So went ahead and took that out. Um, disconnected these parts down here. So right now we're working on taking off the mounts that hold the engine in. Uh, most of the electri electrical stuff should be disconnected already. Um, we just got a few left. And pretty soon we should be able to drop the engine. So that's our progress so far. We'll keep you guys updated. Uh, here's an update. It's almost ready to come out. We went ahead and took off the AC unit, the power steering. Uh, that way it's not holding on to anything. So the only thing holding it in are these side ones. Um, everything else is disconnected from the bottom. Uh, we got all the wiring pulled out and out of the way. So you guys can see. So it's about ready to come out. So uh, got the bottom back um, transmission mount. This, you see those two big holes so there's a transmission mount right there holding on to the back over there went ahead and took that off so we don't have to deal with all of this when we drop it so that is our update 
That's our plan right now is to get the um, cherry picker out. We're gonna lower the car um, closer to the ground and then slowly drop the motor. And then we're gonna use the cherry picker to raise the car up and then we're gonna slide the engine and transmission out. So that's the plan. But my only thing is now is if we could get the car hot, raised high enough to pull out the engine transmission. So let's see if that works out. you guys so we got it out and basically what we did was uh just let it sit on right um right on the cherry picker's legs and then it got stuck with the intake manifold so we did have to remove that just so we can make room and then now we got the car up on jacks and we're just gonna pull this straight out and we have the engine and then we're gonna set this on the ground. We're gonna take off the transmission and then we'll load this up onto the engine stand and then start breaking it down. So, yep. so we are now uh we took off the head and our suspicion was a bad head gasket but after we took it off uh, i mean these are just the uh, leftover stuff but it, the head gasket didn't look that bad so now we're just like maybe we have a bad radiator that it was overheating of course the seals are bad too because it was you know it leaks oil everywhere as you can see, the transmission is pretty dirty. And like the front right here. So you see all these gunk. So you can see it's definitely leaking oil. Um, so anyhow, we took off the head and we took it to the machine shop. And by the time we got there, they, they had closed already. So uh, we'll drop them off tomorrow morning. As for right now, uh, while we still got daylight left, we're gonna go ahead and uh, pressure wash these down. So that way at least we get something clean. Uh, in the meantime, just try to make a parts list of all the brand new parts that we need. So like uh, mounts and stuff. The, like the mounts that go up right underneath right there. Um, they kind of ripped. So we need to replace those. And yeah, so here we go. So if you guys see stuff like this, it's um, our Tommy belt was too close to the block. So every time I turned, it kept on shaving bits and bits. So we have all this nasty like fibers and stuff. So I'm gonna wash those out.
so here's an update how to take it off the um, engine stand again because we're trying to suspect the main bearing seal so you have to take this off and it's uh, located right behind that thing so uh, we think that when we did it the last time we uh, either didn't switch it out or but it was leaking in between right where the transmission and the engine connect so we're suspecting that so we're going to check it out but look at how much cleaner the engine is though So here is the update. Uh, we kind of closed out for the night, but this is how the engine looks right now. So we got the oil pan off and it was not leaking from the oil pan. And update on the um, rear main seal. It was actually in good condition. It was not leaking from there. But um, since we took it off anyways, we have to get a new one. So still got to clean up around here and now we're suspecting that the leak was actually maybe coming from a uh, the distributor because we looked on the um on the o-ring and that is i think when we put that in we just grabbed a random o-ring and when we took that off, it was definitely leaking from there. So we're suspecting that is our leak, but it still doesn't uh, confirm our um, overheating issue. So we're going to inspect um, the radiator tomorrow, tomorrow and flush it out and see if it holds water, if it's leaking, uh, what's going on. But the garage is a mess right now we got tools and parts everywhere so i'm just hoping that we figure out where everything goes back we got more parts on the other side of the car too so hopefully we don't end up with like extra screws after we're done supposedly <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time that happened